Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody, can you lift your voice to the Lord this morning? I mean, like, really? Like your favorite team just scored a touchdown now times 10. Come on, give God praise in this place this morning. Come on, set the atmosphere to receive from God. How many of you know he's drawn to your praise? You can set the atmosphere for God to move. Or you can set the atmosphere for God to not move. Now I'm going to go ahead and apologize to all the English majors in the room. I will hurt your ears before this is over. Please forgive me now. Amen. I'm from West Kentucky. We have our own language. If you come there, you need a translator. I'm just saying. Come on, right now, and just open your heart and set the atmosphere for God to do something great in your life. Amen. God wants to do something great in your life. It's God's will to do something great in your life. And it will be up to you, not up to me, the preacher, not up to the praise team, not up to Mike giving the altar call. It will be up to you what God does in your life. Just like in the altar call, what was it, six or seven, eight people responded. It's the greatest decision you'll ever make, but you're going to have to make more decisions from this day forward to keep following God. But you responded to God and an atmosphere was set in your heart to receive from heaven. And you received the greatest miracle that any human being could ever receive, the new birth. And now you're a new creature. I gotta, I'm just going to talk about this for a minute. And if you need to be seated, you can be. But if you need to stand, stand. I'm, I'm the most informal preacher you'll ever meet. So if somebody gets fired up and takes a lap around the room, run fast because I could be right behind you. I'm just saying. The new birth. In other words, the Bible says you just became a new creation. The literal translation, a new species of being. Before you open your heart up, and confess Jesus as Lord, you were a different creature. But after you receive Jesus as Lord and confess him out of your mouth, now you're a new creature, a, a new creation, a new creature in Christ. You're no longer just you. Now you're in Christ. You relocated. You got a change of address. You're in Christ and Christ is in you. And I'm telling you, you have set yourself up for the greatest life that any human could ever live, following the Lord God Almighty through his son Jesus, empowered now by the Holy Ghost to live in this earth. Congratulations on the greatest decision you'll ever make in life. Amen? Amen. You may be seated. Now, I just... I, they asked me, said, would you rather we bring the pulpit down there? I said, yeah, that'd be good. I like to move around. I've never been able to be still, and I'm not even going to start trying now. So I'm just going to move around. I'm sorry for the, if I'm messing up the camera people. But I believe you're good, so we'll just keep moving. Amen. Now, I do want to say thank you, first of all, to Pastor Brian and Jesse for having me here. I do not have my wife with me. That is not her sitting over there. Somebody say, praise the Lord. That is my dear friend, Tim West. We've been friends for over 20 years. He and his wife, Debbie. Uh, Debbie's on our staff. And, man, we go way back. And uh, I, Sue is home preaching this morning. And so Tim and I made the trek out here. And I'm grateful to have him as a friend. And, you know, if you live long enough, the list of people that are your friends for a long time gets pretty short. Where are the people that have lived a while? 
Now, all, all you young people, I know you got friends in your life now and you think they're going to be there forever. I'm just going to go ahead and help you. They won't. Don't get mad about it. People come and go. I know this is not what you want to hear, but I'm just telling you, it's the truth. People come and go. All right. It's okay. Just let them leave the right way. Don't be mad at them when they go. Just bless them. Maybe they're going off into some venture God called them into, and you can pray for them. They need somebody to pray for them. And then your paths cross again at some point in life. Amen. There, I have a preacher friend back in Kentucky. He's a prince of a man. And we, we knew each other years ago. And then, like, we weren't around each other for a long time. And then our paths got kind of close. And then they went this way again. And then now we're working together, serving together, and our churches are helping one another in that area, and we're seeing a great move of God in that area, and our paths, when they crossed this time, they stayed hooked up. Amen. So don't, don't get frustrated if people leave. I, I'm just telling you, that's going to help somebody later on in life. And all the, all the more seasoned saints know what I'm talking about. Amen. I tell you, I appreciate your pastors. And you should too. <laughs> Amen. If you're kind of wondering, if, is this the church I need to be at? I'm going to help you today. Yes. Yes. All of you that just gave your heart to the Lord, don't, don't go shopping. You're here. This is home. You got rescued here. You're home now. Amen. Get, get, listen, nobody put me up to this except God. Get plugged in here. Be a part of what's going on here in this body. Be a part of what this body's doing in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. So, you know, don't go look at 17 other churches. You're home. Do y'all do have a new believers class, new beginners class, or anything like that here? Something like that? I, okay, I don't know what it's called, but somebody here will. Who, who can tell them what it's called? His Steps. Go to the information desk and get all the information you need about his steps and get involved next week. Now, if I just upset the order, I'm sorry. Oh, Pastor, they can't get involved next week. You can, now you have my permission. <laughs> Me and Pastor Brian will work it out later. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Get involved. You know, don't, don't just go out and then nobody sees you for six months and they think you're in the witness protection program. I mean, get involved. Amen. Be a part. If this is your home church, don't miss unless something just went completely haywire and you can't be here. Haywire is a West Kentucky word. I don't know if you use it in Texas or not, but if everything goes haywire, it's bad. Amen. That's the translation. That's the Greek translation. It's bad. Okay? So be here. Be a part of what's going on. So, well, I, I, you know... Church, I, I, don't, don't do the American average of 1.9 times a month. I didn't know what was going on. Well, you weren't here. How would you? <laughs> Be a part of what's going on. Then you know what's going on. Amen. That's what we did years ago when we moved here in 2003. I mean, look, we didn't, we didn't know anybody here really. And, and the Lord told us to move out here to train. We came here to train for ministry. I didn't even understand what that meant. And I found out that there's a lot to training in ministry. There's cleaning toilets. There's cutting cake for like whatever we were doing. I don't know, but we didn't do it in that order. Like I didn't clean the toilet and then cut the cake. So don't, oh my God, I was here when I ate that cake, dear Lord. We watched kids. We, I mean, we did everything. It's like we just wanted to be a part of everything that was going on here. And then we realized if you're a part of everything, it's hard to focus on anything. So then we got down to like two or three things that we were just going to pour our life into and be a part of. And so that's what we did. And we thought we would be here forever and had planned on it. And then the Lord told us to go back to Kentucky. Why? I don't want to go back to Kentucky. I like it in Texas. So, because we thought we were going to be here forever. And so we went back to Kentucky and realized that God wasn't telling us to go back home. Because we, we literally went back to where we came from. 
God wasn't telling us to go back home. He was sending us into our assignment, which is completely different. And so we've been there now since 2008. And we've seen a lot and done a lot and made some mistakes and gotten some things right. And it's been great to see what God will do. And we've seen a lot of people born again. We've seen a lot of people delivered. We've seen a lot of marriages healed. We've seen a lot of lives put back together. And it's all to the glory of God and to the shame of the devil. Amen. So I'm saying all that to say this place will always be special to my family, always, because our lives were changed here. Literally, our lives were changed in this house and in this city, and I will forever be in debt to this house and what it means to our family. And I love your pastors, man. We go way back, and we've, we fought some wars together, and we believe God together, and uh, you know, you got to have people in your life you can believe God with. And, and they're that to us. And I, I love them so much. And they're great. And I'm telling you, you got great leaders in your life. And honor them. They didn't put me up to this. Like, I don't get extra. For, I'm telling you, honor their life. Honor what they're doing. Honor their children. It's different when, when you're a preacher's kid. It's, there's a different kind of deal and a different kind of pressure. Okay? I, I'm not plugging. I'm just telling you. I understand. Like, I, I understand now what our daughter went through when she was younger that I didn't know she was going through. Because sometimes we can be blind to some things. And you don't know they're going through that stuff. And then you talk to them after they get grown. <laughs> and you're like, oh, sorry. <laughs> didn't realize all that. You know, so just honor their family. I'm not saying you don't, but there could be some of you that don't because this was nowhere on my radar. Like I don't come in and give the preachers plugs. I, I don't do all that. I, I'm terrible at hello. I like to just get in a word and go for it. But I'm telling you, if you honor them, you're, if they're your leader, I mean, if you're here, they're your leader. If you're saying this is my church home, they're your leader. So when you honor that leadership, it does something in your life that propels you to where God wants you to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, enough of the gushy stuff about Pastor Brian and Jesse. I love you. <laughs> now, I want to talk to you this morning about one of my most favorite subjects in life, faith. And I talk about it everywhere I go, really, because I feel like it's a mandate that God's put on my life to teach people faith, to preach faith, because without faith, it is number one, impossible to please God. And without faith, you can't receive anything from God. Just coming to church is not enough. It's good to come to church, but you need to come to church in faith. Faith that when whoever is here preaching, you've got the faith to receive what they're saying, and then you can apply that into your life. So faith has a response, and faith is a positive response. But unbelief has a response as well. And unbelief will repel what God is wanting to do in your life, and faith will draw into your life what God's wanting to do. Amen. Now, I'm telling you, I've used faith for a long time. And, you know, I have, I have people, you know, they, people can say some crazy stuff about you. You ever had anybody say something about you that wasn't true? Oh, man. I, people say stuff sometimes. I'm like, you know, I don't even know if I would have done that when I wasn't saved. And I certainly wouldn't do it now. <laughs> so, so I've had some crazy stuff said. And people say, ah, you know, he's one of them faith preachers. I'm like, yes, I am. Why aren't you? He's one of them prosperity preachers. Yes, I am. Why aren't you? He's one of them healing preachers. Yes, I am. Why aren't you? I actually preach the word. Like I don't run around and say that everything in the word is dead and gone. I actually believe that the word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I actually believe that Jesus is still alive. 
I actually believe that God is still on the throne. I actually believe that I'm full of the Holy Ghost and that I'm empowered by heaven to get something done in this earth. What about you? If you believe that, then you can get something done in the earth. Because I can tell you, I've been places that I would have never been on my own. I've done things I would have never done on my own. I've sat at tables I could have never gotten to on my own. I've talked with people I could have never talked to outside of having faith in God. Because I can tell you, you spend over five minutes with me and you realize I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. But I love God with all my heart. And I'll do any, I want to do anything he says. If he says, go, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get on with it. Let's go. Where are we going? Wherever God says. Well, but it might cost me. It will. It will cost you. It could cost you everything, but it will be worth the cost. Jesus said no one builds a building without first counting the cost. I've counted the cost. And I can tell you this, if you'll stay dead enough to yourself, you'll be willing to go anywhere God tells you to go and do anything God tells you to do. And you'll embrace what God says and you'll see God do miraculous things in your life. Amen. We're just getting warmed up. Amen. Now you say, I, I watched the first service. This is different. Yep, you're right. It is very different. And here's why I believe that. We had two services in our church forever, and I always tried to get them to be the same when I would preach. And I finally one day I said, I'm done with that. I can't do it. I'm not cut that way. I just say, Lord, I believe my tongue is the pen of a red writer. And I realize that every time a room fills up, there's different tablets in the room for me to write on. So I just believe God for whatever he wants to say in the moment and say it. So if there was four services, there'd probably be four different things. And I've just come to the point in life where I'm okay with that. If God wants to say something different to somebody, and I'm not knocking how it's done any other way. You understand, people are different and people flow different. So please don't misread what I'm saying. This is just how I operate. There are different people in this room that were in here in the first service. And so there'll be different things said in this service that will attach to someone in a different way. Amen. Thank you, Father. <laughs> oh, Lord, you're so good. You're so good, Father. And I honor you, Father. And I believe you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I believe if you, your power and your glory to sweep into this room. I believe you, Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost. That bodies are healed this morning as we preach. That minds are renewed while we preach. That minds are healed while we preach. I love you, Father. And I pray, Lord, people see just how good you really are. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You know, talking about some of those places, uh, Three weeks ago, maybe, something like that, we were in Brazil. And it was pretty amazing. I don't know if any of you have ever been to Brazil, but it's a beautiful place. But it's some of the hungriest people for the gospel I've ever seen in my entire life. And, you know, we were blessed to get to go preach in a bunch of different places and got to see a ton of people born again. And I fell in love with that place. There, there are places on earth that I, I mean, they have my heart. The Philippines, that's one of those places, has my heart. Man, I love it there. And I, I just, you know, I fit in, but I don't fit in. I don't look like anybody there, but I love everything about there. Yeah, I love the food. I love the culture. I love all of it. And so it makes it easy for me to just go into a place like that and share what God has done. And I'm no different there than I am right now. I don't go, as we say in West Kentucky, I don't put on airs. What you got is what you got. And so I found out that when you do that and just be genuine with people, just be you, just be real, people are all about that because they've lived in a world that's so fake where you, you, can, you can get on your phone and paint a life that doesn't exist. If you'll just be real with people, it goes a long way. Amen. 
And that's what I love about God. He's real. He, listen, he's not, trying to, he's not trying to get around telling you the truth. No, he sent Jesus into the earth. Who is the truth? And everywhere Jesus went, he was doing the will of God. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that Jesus is the express image of God. That he's the very character of God. In other words, everything you see Jesus doing is the will of God. Oh, this is good news. When Jesus healed someone, it was the will of God. When Jesus cast the devil out of someone, it was the will of God. Amen. When Jesus raised the dead, the will of God. When Jesus talked about people being blessed and honored, the will of God. Everything you see Jesus doing is the will of God. Now, when Jesus left to go back to heaven, he assigned us, the church, to carry out the will of God. Amen. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think the church has done so hot over the last 30 or 40 years. Now, you can hate me for that if you want to, but you've got to forgive me to go to heaven, so get over it. <laughs> but it's the truth. If you look at our culture today, you can see that the church took a back seat. I'm telling you, your pastor preached the house down last week. That message was incredible. And it's shining the light on the culture we live in, but I believe it's also shining the light on how the church needs to wake up. Yeah. Amen. The church needs to wake up. The Bible says that judgment comes to the house of the Lord first. So it's the people of God that need to repent as well. I mean, people can say, oh, I've been in church 40 years. Whoopee. You can, you can be in church 40 years and still be in sin. And, and still be, you know, still having funny painted walls on the inside, right? I mean, not, not living like you should. What is that? It's sin. And I'm telling you, folks, we need to get clean. Repentance is a good thing. I've seen more people in the last two years in the church repent of sin and get their heart right before the Lord and then start taking off with God than I had every year prior leading up to this. Why? God's getting his bride ready. I believe it with everything in me. He's getting the bride ready for his return. Amen? Amen. All right, that's just a little side note. I've got seven messages or eight in me this morning, and so we'll just do a, like a song medley. We'll just do a sermon medley. How about that? Amen. So let's talk about what happens if you reject Jesus or you attract Jesus. How many of you know Jesus was rejected at Nazareth, his hometown? Why? Familiarity. That's why I said, I think it was in the last service, maybe I've already said it in this one. That if you get too familiar with your leaders, you can't receive from them. They were too familiar with Jesus and they could not receive. Isn't that, you know, all, all religious people talk the same. Isn't that, isn't, that, isn't that the carpenter's son? This is how they talk where I'm from. I'll tell you what religious people sound like in Kentucky. That way if you ever come there and you hear one talking, you would be like, aha. Isn't that that carpenter's boy? So I'm telling you. You want to spot a religious devil in Kentucky, I'm giving you how to do it. Well, I, I think so, but I'm pretty sure it's Mary's son. Notice, now you, you can read whatever kind of tone you want to here, but that, <laughs> that's where it's coming from. The, the sinners were not the people Jesus had trouble with. It was the religious crowd Jesus had trouble with. And it hadn't changed. That spirit's still in the earth today. Well, listen, if you're going to get anything done for God, listen to me. If you do anything for God, you're going to deal with this spirit. You can guarantee it because it's going to continually come at you, try to get you to stop doing what you're doing for God. But the best thing you can do is not listen to that spirit. Just keep right on trucking and going after God and doing what God told you to do. Amen. Because then you'll see miracles. Amen. Amen. 
and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. We're in Matthew 14, or 13. Uh, verse 55 now, verse 56. And his sisters, are they not all with us? And where did this man get all these things? Religious, that religious spirit always talks down to the gifting of God. Trying to talk it down so that gift can't be received. You've got to make up in your mind. I'm going to live above people's opinion. And I'm going to live above what that religious spirit says. I'm going to do what God told me to do. Regardless of people's opinion. Because they've all got them. And you can be a saint today and a devil tomorrow. Or vice versa. Paul landed on an island. A viper jumps out on him. He shakes it off. He's a devil. 24 hours go by. He doesn't swell up and die. Now he's a God. People change. God does not change. What did God tell you to do? Do it. Well, now so-and-so says it won't work. Are they God? Listen. I know you probably might have thought you're getting somebody polished. I, listen, I'm just a hillbilly that loves Jesus, and I'll, I'll just tell you like it is. Quit caring what people think about how you can't get something done because of where you came from or the color of your skin or what neighborhood you grew up in or how much education you have or don't have. If God told you to do something, then heaven approves. Now go get it done. Amen. So they were offended at him. They were offended at Jesus because Jesus was doing what God sent him to do. You know, they said they were offended at me, Pastor. Okay. Well, you're in good company. They were offended at Jesus. Wear it as a badge of honor now. Amen. A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and his own house. Now, he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. One translation says he marveled at their unbelief. You know, you've really done something if you get Jesus to marvel at your unbelief. Where we're from, we'd just call that pretty sorry. He, mar he marveled at their unbelief. I want him to be marveling at my faith, not my unbelief. Amen? I dare you at his church to get God to marvel at your faith. Get him to marvel at you. see what God will do if you get him to marvel at your faith. You wouldn't be able to put another person in here if you greased them, tried to squeeze them in. Why? Because miracles... Because God is exalted, because he is exalted above everything else in the culture, because people are coming here that are crippled and they're being healed, because people are coming here demon-possessed and they're being delivered, because the work of God is going on in this place. People want to be free. They just don't know where to go get it. And if you'll be the church where they can go get free, they'll show up and it will be easy to go get them. If you minister to somebody, it's easy when you're operating under the power of God. If you're operating under the power of where you go to church, it won't work. But if you're operating under the power of God, it will work. I'm telling you, listen, this, these country eyes have seen a thing or two. I, listen, we cast the devil out of a lady in Brazil. And I mean, I've cast devils out before. But this was like a, a real serious full-time devil like paid all week devil, like didn't take any time off devil. See, we medicate devils in America. Mm -hmm. 
We meditate them here. We give them a pill, they sit down, and they go, well, we got them where we want them. But this one was not medicated. And I'm telling you, this woman flipped out. She's convulsing. And every, I've never seen it. I've seen a few things, but what I saw after the convulsing started, I've never seen. Every bone in her face was moving. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow. What do we have here? My wife said the best way I can explain it, you know the massage chairs have the things in the back? That's what it looked like in her face. Tormented by devils. So we start casting devils out of her. And we're in another man's crusade. And devils are coming out. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing to see what God was doing. And then all of a sudden, she went just limp. And I thought, uh-oh. My first thought was, she died. <laughs> and then I thought, if we don't raise her from the dead... This old boy's crusade is over. <laughs> and I'm looking at her and I'm thinking, oh man. And the lady that was, was there with us, I said, hey, I don't think they're all out, do you? She went, nope. I said, well, let's get them out then. And we called out a lion devil. And boy, she, she was not dead. But when that one came out, she was free. She was smiling. She was happy. Her husband was happy. Her mama was happy. And she walked out of there smiling from ear to ear, free, not because of a church, a, a name. You understand what I'm saying? But because someone actually believed what Jesus said. The preacher that was preaching believed what Jesus said. All the people that were helping believed what Jesus said. I mean, I believed it. I, I didn't speak Portuguese, but that devil understood English. See, that's the thing. I, there's people I can't communicate with in the natural, but I'm telling you, every devil knows the authority of God. So I, it don't matter to me if I can't speak the language. If a demon manifests, I'm like, hey, you shut up and come out of there. And they're like, okay. Because it's authority. Why? Faith. I have no ability to do that on my own, but I have faith in the God that lives in me to get the job done. So don't reject what God's doing because then he can't do it in your life if you need it. You know, if, if someone manifests here and a devil comes out of them, don't sit there in a religious mind and reject that because you may just have one yourself. Maybe I'll get invited back. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, Mark 5. Am I out of time? Somebody throw something at me, a penalty flag, or I, I don't even know what time I'm supposed to quit. So I brought my lunch. <laughs> I've got three chicken legs, and I can go for a while. Praise the Lord. So Mark 5, you can check the story out. Just you, When you go home, study it. A woman with the issue of blood. You've all, if you've been in church long, you've heard this story preached about, right? Well, she had a different response than they had at Nazareth. At Nazareth, they were with Jesus and despised him because of who he was. They were offended at him. Who does he think he is? He's from here. She had a different response. She'd been sick with this issue 12 years. And I'm going to tell you, that's a hot minute. And she heard about Jesus. She hadn't been with him. She heard about him. She heard what he was doing. And she said, and the Bible says that when you break all that down, she kept on saying, if I get to him, and touch him, I'll be whole. And I'm telling you, this is a word for some of you this morning. 
If you'll touch him, you'll be whole. In the area that's broken. Some people are afraid to go to God, go to God because they're afraid of what God may show them about them. But I promise you, if you'll let him get into those rooms you don't want nobody else in and put his finger on the thing that's holding you back, it'll be the greatest liberation you've ever experienced in your entire life. She said, if I can get to him, I'll be made whole. You do realize that her being out in public was against the law. And you do realize he was a rabbi who had the authority to have her stoned to death. Because everybody she touched would be deemed unclean, including him. <laughs> but Jesus was showing a different way. And she responded with her faith by coming out of her house, going out into public, pushing her way through the crowd and touching Jesus. And she instantly received from God what she was after. Some of you haven't received from God because you haven't acted in faith. You've supposed and presumed that because you're a Christian, God should do it. Now, I'm not getting on to anybody, but if it feels like it, maybe. Faith is action. Pastor Jesse's dad used to say this all the time, and I loved it. He said, dead faith doesn't produce miracles. Well, he would say, he, first he would say, dead dogs don't have puppies. <laughs> How many of you ever heard him say that? And dead faith doesn't produce miracles. And that's right. The people in Nazareth didn't get a miracle. Dead faith. The woman with the issue of blood got a miracle because she had active faith. Capernaum saw miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle because they had faith. So my question to you this morning as I'm wrapping up, landing the plane, putting a caboose on it, whatever you want to call it. Do you have faith? And are you using the faith? Or are you just walking around talking about, yeah, I've got, I mean, I know the word. I've got faith. I mean, praise the Lord. Well, good for you. You'll be saying that 50 years from now wishing you had what you knew God promised. Or you can activate your faith just like, just like the six or eight did earlier. You believed what Mike was saying. Because what he's saying is true. And you accepted it. And you received. It's just receiving a gift. If I, if I had a gift in my hand and I walked up to hand it to you, you have a choice now. I've made the choice of what I want to do with this gift. You now have a choice of whether you're going to receive this gift from me or not receive this gift from me. Do you realize that when your leaders come up here, they're gifts given to the body of Christ? He gave gifts unto men. Some apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. Gifts. He gave gifts. They're gifts, and you need to receive of the gift that's in them. Amen. When you receive a gift, now if I hand this gentleman the gift, and he takes it, he's got to open it. He can just carry the gift around. It does no good. He has a gift, but he gets no benefit. He doesn't even know what's in the box. He gets no benefit from the gift. But when he opens the gift, now he gets full benefit of what I gave him. When you get in this book, it's not some religious manual, but as a manual for your life. And when you put this book in your heart and you confess this book out of your mouth and you put your faith into action, you start to possess now what heaven has offered to all of humanity as a gift. This is why you see some believers that are doing great things for God and some believers who've never gotten out of first gear. They, well, you know, that's for some people, not everybody. That's a religious spirit talking. No, the power of God is for every believer. Amen. Amen. It's, it's no different for me than it is anybody. 
I'm going to tell you, I've stood in, in, in the Philippines. We preached to hundreds of pastors. In my own ability, I have no right. I mean, like, I, I, don't, have, I don't have all the stuff. I just go share with them what I know about God. They're great men and women. Some of them very highly educated men and women. They know the word of God. How many of you know sometimes you just need somebody to come along and fan the flame that's on the inside of you? And if I've done anything here today, I hope I fanned the flame to get you to stop thinking small and start thinking God. Start thinking word of God. Start doing what the word of God says and respond like the woman with the issue of blood and come down out of that house, out into the street and meet Jesus and get something from God. Amen. He said, who touched me? Will he say that about you? Wouldn't that be something good to have on your tombstone when you're out of here? They touched him. They touched God with their faith and they got something great done in the earth. You look at all the greats that we, we consider great preachers and great men and women of God. They all exercised their faith and they all did things they couldn't do on their own ability. Every one of them. Every one of them did things that they could not do on their own. There's no, I couldn't get up here by myself. I don't, listen, I'm telling you, God wants to do more for you than you want to do for you. He's a great God. There is no guile in him. And some of you may have a bad idea about God because of what a religious person told you. I was the same way until a man told me about the love of God. And he broke it down. And it broke me down. And I gave my heart to the Lord and I don't regret one day of it. God will take you places you never dreamed you could go. Amen. Come on, would you bow your heads with me? Father, I thank you for these great people. I thank you for this day. Lord, I believe you. People will go out of here using their faith for your glory and the shame of the devil. I thank you, Father. We serve a mighty God. And we walk and tread on serpents and scorpions. And we've been given authority over all the power of the devil. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen, amen.